So in this lesson, we're gonna discuss properties of logarithms. In the same way that we had properties of exponents, we also have properties of logarithms. Uh, we're gonna spend a few days working on this. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna use our knowledge of properties of exponents to help us derive the properties for logarithms. So for this slide, you don't have to write it down, but you should follow along and then I'll tell you when to list the properties. But let's assume, or let's have these two equations. We have x equals the log base b of m, and then y equals the log base b of n. So we can rewrite each of these in exponential form to say b to the x equals m on the left, and then b to the y equals n on the right. Okay? So if we multiply these two, in our next step, we get b to the x times b to the y, since b to the x is m and b to the y is n, that would create this equation, okay? So using our laws of exponents, we have a base b and a base b and we're multiplying. So what we're gonna do is add the x and the y. Okay, so now we have b to the x plus y equals m times n. And now if we return this back to log form, we get x plus y is log base b of mn. Okay, so this is from exponential form to log form. And since we know that x and y from the beginning, so I'll scroll back up, x represents log base b of m and y represents log base b of n, we can substitute those values back in and be and come up with a property of logarithms. Okay. So if we have the log base b of m plus the log base b of n, we can rewrite that as a single logarithm, and that would be log base b of m n. Okay, so this is the product property of logs. So here we are, we should write these down. So we have our properties of exponents here and then the properties of logs there. So if we think about it, okay, when we multiply bases, okay, with the same x or multiply um, these two expressions with the same base, we will add the exponents, okay? So now if we look to the right, if we think about it, if we're adding the logs of the same base, then we can rewrite that as multiplication. So since logs and um, exponential functions are inverses, notice how the operations are switching, okay? So here we're adding our exponents, but here we're adding the logs. Here we're multiplying these bases with exponents, but here we're multiplying what we're taking the log of. So we're seeing some differing or inverse operations here that are helping us, okay? So this is the product property of logs. We're gonna practice with that today. And then in addition to that, we'll have the quotient proper, property. So if we have b to the m over b to the n, we subtract the exponents. So that means if we have logs of the same base and we subtract them, then what we're gonna to do to simplify, we could say it's the log base b of m divided by n. And this is the quotient property. So I would definitely write these down, these two down. Okay. So let's see how we can practice with them. So for th these two problems, we're going to write each expression in condensed form. So condensed form means a single logarithm using the properties of logs. So notice here how we're subtracting these two expressions. They have the same base. So I can rewrite it as a single logarithm of the same base. And since we have subtraction, I'm gonna be dividing four in, or 12 and four. So that simplifies to log base eight of three. Okay. Okay, so now for the next one, notice how we have some subtraction and then addition. And we have log base x for all of them. So we could write it as a single logarithm, log base x, and then we have all this stuff that we need to do. So we have 2a, and since we're subtracting b, we have 2a over b divided by b, and then if we are adding the next log, we're multiplying that by b times c. 
And within this, we can reduce our b's and be left with the log base x sub 2a, oops, 2ac. Okay, so this is rewriting in condensed form as a single logarithm. Now on the flip side, we can also rewrite these logarithms and expand them. So if I have the log base 8 of 64 divided by y, that means I want to rewrite using as many logs as possible. So I have log base 8 of 64, and since I'm dividing, that indicates subtraction, log base 8 of y. And now, what is the log base 8 of 64? So 8 raised to some number gives us 64, and that's 2. So we can always simplify at the end if we need to, or if we can rather. And then for the next one, we're multiplying all of these, which means we have a log base 7 of 5, and then we're adding log base 7 of 7, and then adding log base 7 of 14. Okay. And now one of these can be simplified. The log base 7 of 7 is 1. 7 raised to the first power is 1. So we can leave our answer like this. You don't have to rearrange. Like for the sake of our of our problem solving, we're going to be using the properties of logs to help us solve equations in a, in a few lessons. Okay, so just a reminder, condensed form means to rewrite as a single logarithm. And then expanded form means to rewrite expressions using the most amount of logs. So you're expanding it using those properties of logarithms. Okay, so now we have the power property of logs. And we're going to derive this, so you don't have to write it down just yet. But if we have the log base b of a to the fourth, if we expand a to the fourth, we end up getting log base b of a times a times a times a. And we just reviewed the property of logs. So what if I see this multiplication here? That means now I'm adding four logarithm base b of a to each other. Okay, we could separate that and use our properties of logs. So since we have four of them, we can rewrite it as four times the log base b of a. So if I'm going back, we have log base b of a to the fourth is equal to four times the log base b of a. So a shortcut could be, oh, I'm just going to move that exponent to the front there. Or conversely, we can move that coefficient to the back. And that's how we can use our properties of powers. So here's the shortcut. Okay. We have log base b of m to the r. That means I could move the r to the front and have it be a coefficient, or I can shift it back to the exponent. So the r can move to be an exponent or shift back to be a coefficient. And this will be helpful um, in simplifying logarithms. So let's use that to help us. Okay, so notice how for the first one, we have 2 times log base 5 of 3 plus 3 times log base 5 of 2. So this 2 is in front. I want to move this to be an exponent here and then move the 3 to be an exponent. So what I have is log base 5 of 3 to the second, which is 9, plus log ba base 5 of 2 to the third, which is 8. So now I can rewrite that as log base 5 of 9 times 8, which is 72. Okay. So let's look at this next one. We have the 3 is the coefficient, so I'm going to shift that back to the exponent. So this is now log base, three, base 9 of x to the third, and then minus log base 9 of x plus 1. And since we're subtracting these logs and they both have the same base of 9, we have log base 9 of x to the third over x plus 1. Okay. And then this last one. So 
we don't have any coefficients or exponents, but we can now multiply 25 and 3 and then divide by 5 because we all have the log base of 4. So we have 25 times 3 divided by 5, and that gives us the log base 4 of 15.